Hey everybody, this is Jason from Alphatone Audio back again, and today I want to talk about your soldering iron, specifically how much time you're taking to make sure the tip of your iron is clean. If you're just getting started with soldering, or if you've been soldering for a while and it's just not clicking for you, this may help you. Well, you always want to make sure the tip of your soldering iron is clean so you get good, consistent, even heat transfer from the iron into your parts and that there's no residue from your iron getting into your joints. So let's talk about it. Two simple ways to keep it clean while you're working. One is the soldering sponge, which probably most people are familiar with. If you've got any kind of soldering station like this, for sure you've gotten one that's included with it. And from what I can tell, this is no different from like a standard synthetic kitchen sponge or something like that. As a matter of fact, I've used those synthetic kitchen sponges uh, from time to time in a pinch. Uh, they work fine. I don't know if I'd use a natural one or not. I just have a feeling they would catch on fire. But uh, uh, this is pretty simple to use. Basically, you do want to get these wet, but you don't want it soaking or dripping wet. Basically, I soak it all the way through so it is totally soaked in saturated water, and then I wring it out as tightly as I can so there's no more water dripping out of it uh, before I start to use it. So again, wet all the way through so you can use the whole sponge, but you don't want it dripping. You certainly don't want any water pooling in the bottom of your soldering iron base here. And to use, you're just simply going to just take a second and drag the tip of that iron through the sponge. Pro tip on these, if you really want, you can use a distilled or a deionized water to wet your sponge just because there's going to be less residue in that water and that's less residue that's going to get baked onto the tip of your iron. Typically I don't and I've never noticed anything like that, but if you want to, it's certainly worth a shot. The only downside to these that people talk about is they tend to take a lot of heat out of the tip of your soldering iron and it takes you longer to get back up to temperature. That's probably a little bit more true if you're just using one of these as opposed to like a soldering station because I don't really notice that it's really slowing down my soldering quite a bit. Although I am doing a lot of audio plugs and jacks and that kind of thing, which are larger pieces of metal that tend to suck a lot of the heat out of the iron anyway. Maybe if you do PCB stuff where the parts are a lot smaller, you may notice it. But again, your mileage may vary. Um, if you do notice a lot of uh, heat loss when using a sponge, you may uh, raise your tip temperature a little bit. Uh, get a more powerful iron, something like that. Second thing you can use is this wire mess style cleaner. Um, this basically they all have some kind of base like this and they have these removable, it looks like just a very, very coarse steel wool. It's usually brass or aluminum or I think some people even use steel in theirs. And to use it's very simply just kind of stab it a little bit with the tip of your soldering iron or push it in and uh, rotate the tip just to make sure that you're cleaning 100% of the coverage of your tip. Uh, these work really well and they will not suck as much heat out of the tip of your iron as the sponges will. The only downside really to using these, and it's a small one, as you can see if you just have it sitting on a desk, they do tend to move around a little bit just because they are very lightweight. There's nothing to say you couldn't put some double-sided tape or Velcro or something on the bottom. I've also heard of people using lead fishing weights. Um, they open these up and put them in the bottom and just to weigh it down a little bit to keep it from moving, uh, which seems like a pretty good idea to me. So. Um, between the two of these, I probably use them both the same amount. I know whenever I sit down to do uh, some work, I'm always making sure that this is present and that my sponge is wet. And I kind of just go back and forth between the two. So the question is, how often should you be cleaning the tip on your iron? For me, I, I'm doing it constantly. Every two joints, possibly. Again, because I do a lot of audio connectors, I tend to solder in groups of like two or three either you know two joints for a tip sleeve type connector or three joints for a TRS or an XLR or something like that and for sure I'm cleaning every single connector um, if I'm doing a, a large joint like say I'm doing guitar repair and I have three or four wires that have to get soldered onto the back of a potentiometer and have to really feed a lot of solder for sure I'm going to clean the iron after every single one of those uh, I don't really think that you can clean the iron too much. Again, when people talk about heat loss, some people say, oh, there's too much thermal cycling going on. Uh, the temperature of the tip is going up and down too much and it reduces your tip life. Uh, personally, I, I use tips for years. I don't really find that that's a problem. So again, I think cleaning your tip more often is better than not cleaning it enough. Now, if your tip has gotten incredibly dirty and you need to clean it off, and neither one of these is going to be effective enough to get uh, any kind of baked on residue off. There's a couple of things you can do. Some people will recommend that you use a 600 grit sandpaper. And I don't really recommend that simply because this tip of your soldering iron is not just um, solid bare metal. They're usually uh, solid copper, but they also have 
a iron plating over top of that copper and that keeps the copper from slowly evaporating and basically just disintegrating from the heat. So if you get too aggressive with sandpaper, even something very fine like a 600 grit, you're eventually going to start removing that iron plating and once that copper is exposed, the life of your tip is definitely going to degrade a lot faster. So if you want to do something like that, you can do it just very, very lightly. Just be careful with it. Second thing you can use is a tip tinner. This is the Thermaltronics tip tinner, which is pretty popular, but they all kind of do the same thing. This is basically, it's, it's almost like a solder. It's basically a compressed tablet of pure tin with some ammonia in there as well. Now, if you're going to tin the tip of your uh, soldering iron, and when I say tin, I'm just meaning what you should be doing on a regular basis anyway, is always keeping a little bit of solder on there. So if you're just going like this, putting a little bit of solder on your iron, and you're noticing it's just not flowing very well, and it doesn't really want to stick, that means that your tip is definitely too dirty and you're just having problems with solder adhesion. If you get to that point, these tip tinners can help to clean the tip of your iron, remove that excess oxidation, and bring a little bit of tip back, or bring a little bit of life back to your iron. Pretty simple to use, you're just gonna take the tip and you're gonna put it in there, rotate it around a little bit, just a few seconds. And this will kind of melt away just a little bit and you just wanna keep doing that, maybe do that run it through your cleaner a little bit and then go back to this until you're getting a nice silver shiny tip all over. Then you can always go back to the solder and check and just make sure the solder is flowing nicely on the tip of your iron. And once you have that, then you're ready to go. Now, another thing about these is both the sponges and the wire meshes. Uh, these are disposable after a while uh, these will basically just start to disintegrate and these will just get very very clogged with solder um, when i get rid of them this is uh, hazmat i put these into the uh, hazardous trash along with the dead batteries the old cfl bulbs or something like that and you just kind of bag them up because i don't want lead dust and stuff all over the place so when you dispose of this do so in a responsible manner um, you, you can get the replacement sponges. Like I said, you can't use the standard kitchen sponges or something like that. But if you want to get the um, original, you know, Weller or Hacko or whatever kind of brand you have, I think they're just a little bit expensive. But I guess I'm a sucker for form factor on these, so I, I, I pay the extra money and I make sure I always get the original ones. Um, on these ones, when I order replacements, um, when this came, I had one huge um, you know, sponge piece in there and when I got a bunch of aftermarket replacements I ended up getting like really really small ones and that happens you can always take multiples of these and in fact I had took three of these and I just crammed them in there just because when I put the iron in I just want to make sure there's like a little bit of pushback and a little bit of resistance so it's actually dragging on the sides of the iron to get them clean so if you get something that's a different size don't worry just cram them in there until you just get a certain amount of pushback. Okay that's about all I have on this one quick simple tip to try to take your soldering to the next level. I hope this is helpful. If you did find it helpful, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.